morning. I'm getting ready to go to the operating room and just waiting on the team to finish their prep. And so I wanted to show you guys the inside of an implant. Have you ever seen the inside of a breast implant before? Probably not, unless you've been to a plastic surgeon and they cut one open in front of you, which is highly unlikely. But I have two implants here. The first thing I wanted to point out before I cut one of these open and just share with you is that these implants are almost exactly the same size in cc's. This one is 440 and this one is 450. They're made by the same manufacturer. They have the same shell. They have the same material on the inside, the same type of cohesive material on the inside. The only difference is their distribution of it and the shape. So if you'll notice, this is a higher profile implant. And this is a lower, it's actually not low profile, but it's lower than this one. So this is high and this is called moderate plus. But I thought that was interesting just to show how different implants can be when they're nearly the same size. And then if I hold them up like this, you can see that this one has a bigger diameter and then this one is smaller. And that, and then this one projects like we saw in my hands more than this one, but I thought that was cool and I wanted to share it with you. Okay, are you ready for this? I wanna show you what the inside of a silicone gel implant looks like. And so we're going to cut it open. And I don't know if my scissors are even gonna be sharp enough to do this, but we'll see if it works because it can be pretty indestructible. So here's the implant. And let's see if we can cut it open. <laughs> It's not easy. Oh, there we go. Okay, so <laughs> this is what the inside of an implant looks like. Let's see if I can show you even closer. So see this gel? So when we talk about gummy bear, gummy bear is kind of an older term, still used by patients, but not so much by plastic surgeons necessarily. Talking about how like if you cut a gummy bear, it still keeps its form and its shape. Um, most new updated devices, breast implants, have somewhat of a gummy bear type structure to them. Meaning I cut this and it doesn't just spill out like a liquid. It still has form and it's still sticking together. It's still cohesive. I'm just doing that because I'm squeezing it. And then look, I release it and it goes back in, retains its shape. So something interesting to note is that let's say you have this implant in your body and you get a rupture in it. Why is it that a lot of times women have ruptures and they don't know that they have ruptures? It's because if this were in me right now, it's still maintaining its shape and its volume. So the breast could still have all of its augmented volume and all of its augmented shape it could just have this gel right there that may or may not leak and displace out of the implant or it could just totally stick and stay where it is depending on how much pressure you have on your breast depending on how much trauma happens to your breast maybe during a mammogram or something it'd be squeezed out but regardless this is what the inside of a modern day breast implant looks like that is kind of middle of the road cohesivity. This isn't the most cohesive. So there are some implants that you cut open and they're even more cohesive than this, but just see how this structure just sticks together. I can squeeze it out and it goes back in. I can squeeze it out and it goes back in. So when we talk about cohesivity in implants, that's what that means is that the gel is actually cohesive and it sticks together despite the shell being ruptured. So when we talk about the shell of the implant, this part that's holding it, the bag that's holding it, shell, the implant material itself, this is the silicone gel. The way that we can screen for implant ruptures is with an ultrasound. I do that in my office, I have an ultrasound and I'm trained and certified in screening for implant ruptures. I love to do it for my patients and I love to do it for women who I haven't done their breast dogs, but they've had it elsewhere and they haven't had the opportunity to screen for implant rupture. The FDA recommends that you screen for implant rupture 
um, beginning about five years after you have your initial augmentation, and then every two to three years thereafter, the choices between ultrasound and MRI, I think most people agree that ultrasound is favored initially. It's cheaper, it's more convenient, and you can also do an ultrasound just in office. It's so easy and it's so convenient. You could just pop in here on your lunch break and I could do it for you. So um, ultrasound first, and then if there's something that can't be well defined or seen on ultrasound and we need better information, then you can switch to MRI. But on an ultrasound, when I'm looking at the implant and trying to assess it for rupture, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the disruption from shell to shell. And so this is what I can pick up on ultrasound. I can pick up the fact that there is not continuity along the shell. And so I basically image all around the implant in every quadrant. And if there's an area where the shell is no longer in continuity, you can see it on the ultrasound. So I thought that was pretty cool to share. And to be honest with you, this is the first time I've ever traumatized an implant like this pretty fun. All right, y'all, I'm going to head to the OR. Have a very happy day.